has to pray for, pray for me. Yeah. It seems like in that devil's not fighting me one way, he's fighting me three or four more ways. So I desire everybody's prayers. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing, when the devil quits fighting me, you're in trouble. Yeah. Now, as long as you're meeting that old dude, you know you're going the same way he is. Right. But when you find, whenever that, uh, you quit meeting him, uh, honey, you're in trouble. Amen. Praise yeah. the Lord. I'll tell you what. I'll make this announcement in the beginning. They, uh, this weather's supposed to get bad. I don't know what time it's supposed to get bad, but it's supposed to get bad tonight. And uh, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to call it the service tonight. Uh, there's two reasons why I'm going to call it off. I've been sick, <laughs> and I'm still not feeling well. And uh, I don't want to drive in ice. No one have to drive in ice. Right. If you want to come, well, you can. And you know, be here by yourself. That's all right too. You pray <laughs> for me. But uh, <laughs> I, uh, I feel like that it would be wise because it, this, uh, it's supposed, supposed to get bad. Yes. I would admit my feelings. Uh, I have been sick, but uh, I don't know what. I ate something last night or something though that made. I was sick all night last night, but anyway, I wouldn't let that bother me. I, if it wasn't for the uh, uh, of this weather, I don't know what it's going to do. Now, it's, you might not think it's very, very long, very far from here to Paducah, but you get a little ice on the on the ground. It gets it's a long way from here. A long way. Praise the Lord. So everybody, to call somebody that you think might come tonight, and just tell them that we're not going to have service tonight because it is supposed to get bad. <sighs> We are going to serve communion in just a few minutes. We run out of time last Sunday, and we uh, didn't do it last, the last one, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to preach a little bit. I'm going to over here again, Matthew, in the 14th chapter, and I'm going to begin reading here at verse 22 and talk to you just a little bit uh, about a walking on the sea. Uh, <laughs> You say, well, Brother Walls, have you ever walked on the sea? Uh, no, I, I've never walked on the sea. Uh, I barely have waited in it. Uh, uh, and I, 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 went out, I went down, it was down in Gaveston, Texas, and, and we went down there, and it was in the fall, and uh, we all went down there and was uh, pastor and uh, son and, and Oshi and I and, and Dickie, and we went down there. It's an awful beautiful place there. But we got to, they said, well, just take off your shoes and walk around. Well, I can't walk nowhere without my shoes. Uh, everything everything hurts my feet. I, I am a Kentuckian, but I still wear shoes. But anyhow, when we were, were down there, there was all kinds of jellyfish on the, uh, that were out there in the fall. And, and you step on one of them, you wish you hadn't, because them dudes sure will burn you. And the pastor's son lived down there. And he reached down and started picking one up. I pulled his, pulled his hand back away from him. I said, you better not touch that thing. He said, why? I said, because that, 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 that jellyfish was, you wish you'd never touched him. You'd think that uh, your hand caught on fire. And he said, oh, uh, you got to be kidding. I said, well, go ahead and touch him. You ought to. I'm not kidding, but I'm going to tell you, you better not touch your hand. And so I pulled his hand out of the fire. Praise the Lord. He kept him from getting uh uh, burnt or with them because they were really they were really strong in, uh, in a hurry. It looked like just a pile of jelly there in there, but they they were powerful little time. Reading from this twenty sixth verse, I mean the twenty second verse uh, of the fourteenth uh, chapter of Matthew. The Bible said, "In straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship." and to go before him unto the other side while he went, uh, while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. And, the, and when the evening was come, he was there alone. And the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves and wind, uh, were uh, contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. 
And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. And straightway Jesus said unto them, uh, and spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I, and be not afraid. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be the, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship and walked on the water to go to Jesus, I want you to notice this. Praise the Lord. But when he saw the ways of this, and uh, he was afraid and began to sink and cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus straight, uh, stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore did thou uh, doubt? I want to. I want you to. I, I want to y'all to notice something. Once we get out of the realms and out of the sight of God, it ain't long until we are saying, "Lord, I'm afraid." Praise the Lord. There's something different about you, Lord, and I'm afraid. Now, I want you to notice that these disciples. We, we would wonder how that they could be with Jesus all time and still be afraid and seeing everything that he done, expecting anything to happen. How in the world could we say, Lord, <laughs> hallelujah, Lord, I, I'm afraid. I, I, you know, you're a spirit. Of course he's a spirit. The Bible said God is a spirit. Whenever you realize how powerful that spirit of God is, hallelujah, then you can become acquainted with the measure of power that God has. Amen. There's too many people that don't realize that God is almighty. Yes. Praise the Lord. Anything can happen to him. And anything that he does, he does it well. Can you imagine someone walking on the water? Praise the Lord, I can get rid of this noisy thing. I can't, I can preach better without a can with it. I don't need any way. Praise the Lord. Uh, they, uh, praise the Lord. But let me notice this. Whenever that you and I <coughs> realize that if we keep our eyes right on the Lord and we keep Him right in our sight, <coughs> He's not going to do nothing that we won't see. Amen. The Bible said, <clears throat> I'm coming after people that have made their self ready and looking for me. Amen. And if you're not looking for him, he's not going to appear. He's going to appear the second time to them that are looking for him. And he's going to come and take you out of here. But if you're not looking for him, don't look for nothing to happen. But keep your eyes on See what Jesus did. He sent them ahead. He had to work a miracle. He had to glorify the Father. He had to send him out there. How to do it, the ship on out there. It wouldn't have been any blessing in them going out there if he hadn't come walking on the water. Right. Praise the Lord. He'd healed all them people back on the bank. They saw all this happen. But here Jesus come walking on the water. And it wouldn't have been nothing, it wouldn't have been nothing about it that would have been supernatural if he hadn't walked on the water. And then when he walked on the water, it scared him. <laughs> Think about all the people who say, Oh, God, will you do this? And will you do that? And then when he does it, they'll say, Oh, my God. Look what happened. Oh, my. Oh, my. There's a hank in this house. Uh, hallelujah. He'd come to. Oh, my. Hallelujah. Look at what he done. But let, can't, can't you imagine, though, that Moses, when all them, when them serpents, <laughs> when they were curling around on the ground, can't you imagine how they do them servants see uh, of the uh, the high God there in, in that day they were serving him, or they thought his high God. And whenever they throw their serpents and their sticks down, or their uh, they throw them down, and when they become serpents, then Moses just took his and threw it down, he swallowed all the rest of them up. Right. 
Hallelujah. That's the way the glory of God will do. I don't care what's going on around about you. When the glory of God gets there, he'll take everything else. You let you just let everybody be out here just having a, a dance or let them out and be out there in the garden. Hallelujah. Just having a, a great time. Praise the Lord. But you let someone die and that one be raised from the dead by the Spirit of God. It draws everybody's attention back to the Lord, doesn't it? And that's what Jesus had to do, was had to get those disciples' mind back to him. Yeah. You see our mind just the way we're out in the ship and we're out there sailing the wind is tossing us about and we're about to sink. Yeah. Here we are all out there <clears throat> and we're, we're, we're nothing, nothing seems to have God on our mind. We're just out there. And then all of a sudden here comes somebody walking on the water. <laughs> Now, don't you believe that'll wake you up? Oh, Amen. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't you think I would cause you to... Now, I'm going to tell you something. God, like Brother Mitchell was teaching this morning, God is going to work a supernatural thing that's going to turn people's eyes back to Him. Little by little. Now, you know what He said? He said, Arise. Now, this 11th chapter of Revelation should rise and measure the temple. Hallelujah. And the court which is out, leave it out because I give that to the Gentiles, to the Gentile dispensation be fulfilled. Yes. Praise the Lord. And he said that Jerusalem shall be trotted under the feet. Hallelujah. Until the dispensation be fulfilled. There's a lot of places in the Bible that talks about the, the end of the Gentile dispensation. And you and I, you and I are Gentiles. Praise the Lord. But we better be ready to meet God. I, I, you know, when you talk about God and you, you bring all these things in and you take, the Bible said, Thou shall have no other God before you. Hallelujah. You can't have another God. Right. Oh, Muhammad's not a God. Amen. Hallelujah. That's a, uh, that is the only God we have is Jesus Christ. Amen. The only name that he has is Jesus Christ. And that name is above going to see and every tongue is going to confess that he is Lord of Lords and praise the Lord and all these other things that you and I are looking at. I'm going to tell you all something. Just around the corner the Antichrist is already among us. If you don't believe it, you just anything that's, anything that's different from Christ and don't believe in Christ is Antichrist. You 